Welcome to today's video where we explore the insightful book, Black Box Thinking, by Matthew Syed. In this compelling exploration of success, failure, and learning from mistakes, Syed uses the concept of black box thinking to shed light on innovation, resilience, and progress. So, grab a seat, relax, and let's dive into the world of transformative ideas. But before we dive into the content, I kindly request a moment of your time to appreciate this video by liking it, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that notification bell. Your support means a lot to me. Thank you so much. We all know the black box in aviation, the device that records crucial data during flights, helping investigators understand the causes of accidents. Syed urges us to apply a similar approach in our own lives and organizations by embracing failure as a crucial step towards improvement. He argues that our fear of failure often holds us back from reaching our full potential. Black box thinking reveals that all paths to success lead through failure and what you can do to change your perspective on it, admit your mistakes, and build your own black box to consistently learn and improve from the feedback failure gives you. Black Box Thinking by Matthew Syed is a book about the importance of learning from failures and using them to improve. It explores the power of creating a culture of openness and the benefits of looking at mistakes as opportunities to innovate and grow. Matthew Syed is a British journalist and Oxford alumnus, as well as a three-time men's singles champion at the Commonwealth Table Tennis Championships. He is also the author of Bounce. Black Box Thinking explores the ways in which failure despite all the shame and pain associated with it, is actually one of our greatest assets. Full of practical tips on how to develop a healthy, productive relationship to failure, black box thinking will put you on the path to success. Black box thinking is a thought-provoking exploration of the power of learning from failure and the importance of embracing a growth mindset. Here's why this book is worth reading. It offers compelling case studies and real-world examples to show the immense value of confronting and learning from mistakes. By challenging conventional thinking and advocating for a more open, accountable culture, the book provides insights that can improve not only individual lives but entire systems and industries. With its accessible tone and engaging storytelling, the book captivates readers, making it an enjoyable and enlightening read. Here is a sentence showcasing the greatness of a quote of this book. It is only when we have staked our ego that our mistakes of judgment become threatening. Matthew Syed. We've talked a lot about deliberate practice already. It's the concept many books debunking talent and looking at world-class performance promote, some including so good they can't ignore you, the talent code. Talent is overrated and the very predecessor of this book, Matthew Syed's Bounce. If deliberate practice is the way to become world-class, then failure is the way to get there. Learning from your mistakes is the whole idea of deliberate practice, but doing so is hard. Why? Because most people don't like mistakes. They shun them, they hate making them, and if they do, they hate admitting them. Black box thinking is about changing that so you can do what's necessary to get where you want to go. Here are three lessons about failure. We hate admitting mistakes even more than we hate making them. Look for opposing evidence by treating your ideas as hypotheses. Develop a positive relationship with failure to stop avoiding it. Are you ready to make failure your friend? Let's do this. Lesson 1. The only thing we hate more than making mistakes is admitting them. What's worse than forgetting to send off your monthly status report to your biggest client? Having to show up the next day and admit it to your boss. Failure is never cool when it happens even though the culture of entrepreneurship is trying hard to tell you otherwise. Having a failed startup has almost become a badge of honor, but what it really means is that you let too much small failures accumulate until you eventually had to suck up a huge one, that your company's not working. Imagine having to tell your investor that you just cost them $3 million. Shouldn't make for a good day. While the goal remains to avoid failure on a grand scale, this can only happen if you admit as many small mistakes as you can. Case in point, Juan Rivera was falsely convicted for rape and murder in 1992 and spent the following 13 years in prison. Even though DNA testing had been used as early as 1984, it took until 2004 until police finally agreed to test the evidence from the case and found he was innocent. Incapable of admitting their mistake, because it was a grave one, it took another seven years until Rivera was finally released 
and paid a $20 million settlement. For the prosecutors, admitting their serious mistake would probably have meant they'd lose their jobs, on top of destroying their confidence. So they didn't. Admitting mistakes is tough, but it's the only way to prevent making even worse ones. If you can start by admitting to yourself that you made one, you're one step ahead. Lesson 2. Treat all of your ideas as hypotheses so you can look for opposing evidence. So how can you make it easier to admit your mistakes? One way would be to treat all of your ideas and conclusions as hypotheses. The world is a scary and complex place, so naturally, we tend to oversimplify things. If we considered every problem in our lives all the time, we'd probably end up paralyzed and not doing anything. Simplifying is a way for us to survive everyday life and navigate the world. But sometimes it doesn't work. For example, bloodletting was a common medical practice for centuries, but it actually ended up killing people instead of curing them. Doctors never tested the validity of the practice, assuming that this cleansing act must be the right way. It never occurred to them that people might need their blood the most when they're sick. Their view was flipped. If someone couldn't even be saved with bloodletting, they were probably doomed from the outset. Don't be a bloodletting doctor. If you think of a new kind of faucet that you think is the best in the world, test it. Build a prototype and let people tell you if you're right. Maybe it's not as intuitive as you think, or your reasoning was faulty when designing it. Seek opposing evidence instead of confirmation so you can improve your hypotheses over time instead of assuming what you know is a given fact. Lesson 3. Change your relationship with failure to a positive one so you'll stop avoiding it. If being successful means living and dealing well with failure, then a positive relationship with mistakes is a precondition for success. It's the difference between a fixed and a growth mindset, only one of which allows you to accept mistakes, admit them, and then take responsibility for them so you can change them. For example, I'm sure when you were in school there were a bunch of cool kids who never studied before a test, or maybe even went out to party the day before. People like these are usually so worried about falling short of expectations that they deliberately sabotage themselves in advance. If they do fine on the test, then things are okay, but if they don't, they can at least blame it on partying. That's a loser's attitude and you know it. So try to see failure in a more positive light and take responsibility for it whenever you can. Black box thinking goes one level deeper on deliberate practice and explains how you can actually make that practice work for yourself. For this reason alone, I can recommend it because as many books as there are promoting the idea of deliberate practice, as little are there about actually making it work. Matthew Syed knows his stuff. Go for it. Those are the individuals who truly deserve to immerse themselves in this extraordinary book. Psychology enthusiasts. Anyone who is sick of making the same mistakes. People who want to turn their failures into successes. The 15-year-old girl who doesn't tell her mom about her bad grades. The 33-year-old political campaign manager who's trying to hush up his candidate's mistakes. And anyone who recently found out an opinion they held for a long time was wrong. Here are some valuable insights extracted from this captivating book. I believe you will find them highly beneficial. Feel encouraged to explore its wisdom further and let it spark new perspectives and ideas on your journey. 1. People are afraid of failure because it compromises their self-esteem. Children have a hard time admitting their mistakes. It's practically automatic for them to deny doing things like drawing all over the walls, even when the evidence of the marker in their hand and the ink on their fingers is indisputable. But are we that much different when we're all grown up? Not really. In general, people are highly averse to admitting that they've made a mistake. In fact, we hate admitting that we've made an error more than we hate making mistakes themselves. A look at the criminal justice system makes this very clear. In 1984, the advent of DNA testing enabled prosecutors to prove guilt beyond doubt. You'd think that this foolproof technology would work the other way around. 2. Helping wrongfully convicted people prove their innocence. Unfortunately, it usually didn't work that way. In most cases, law enforcement simply wouldn't admit that they'd made a mistake. Take the case of Juan Rivera, a 19-year-old with a history of mental illness. In 1992, he was accused of raping and murdering an 11-year-old girl and sentenced to life in prison. Thirteen years later, a DNA test proved Juan's innocence. But prosecutors wouldn't budge, and it took another six years for his release. So why is it so hard to admit mistakes? 
Well, admitting error compromises our self-esteem, especially when it's about something important. Those prosecutors from the Rivera case weren't necessarily bad people. They may have simply wanted to cover up their mistakes. Perhaps the hardest part of admitting mistakes is the first part, admitting to yourself that you've made one. This is especially true when the mistake is a big one, like sending an innocent person to spend 13 years in prison. Admitting such a horrible mistake instantly compromises your self-esteem, making it difficult to even live with yourself. So, in all likelihood, the prosecutors truly believed that Rivera was guilty and that there was some explanation for the negative DNA test that didn't rule out guilt. Two, failure certainly hurts, but it's a necessary precursor to improvement and no doubt learned from some experience in your own life. It's extremely difficult to admit mistakes, but failing face and understand failure has consequences. It hinders our ability to succeed. Failure is more than personal shame. Rather, it's an indication that something is wrong. And when you know that something is wrong, be it your personal attitude or the way a company is organized, then you have an opportunity to fix it. Three, if you can't admit your mistakes, then you'll never progress. Imagine a world in which no one admitted to or learned from their failures. In such a world, mistakes would be repeated again and again with drastic consequences. It's often obvious whether someone succeeded or failed. A patient either lives or dies. A plane either lands or crashes. The subtlety lies in the explanation. Was this failure due to a mistake or not? To learn and develop, you have to subject your theories to failure. We tend to see the world as simple and easily understandable. As a result, we rarely feel the need to test our theories. But this deprives us of the opportunity to see if these theories are true or false. The world is big and scary, so it makes sense that we'd look for simple explanations wherever we can find them. Think back to the practice of bloodletting. Medieval doctors thought that patients who died were simply doomed from the beginning. Such patients were so far gone that even bloodletting couldn't save them. 5. Failure inspires great solutions and helps fine-tune a complicated processes. Failure can be annoying, but it can also inspire you to see problems in a different light. And with this new perspective comes new solutions. Often, great ideas arise when there's a specific problem, that is, when something has failed. The failure itself is what drives you to find a solution, and in this way, failure can function as a driver of progress. 6. Reaching your full potential requires embracing failure. If you want to take full advantage of failure, it's not enough to understand intellectually that failure is helpful. You also need to build a positive relationship with it. If you can't handle failure, if you run from it instead, then you'll end up failing more than is necessary. Syed contrasts the fixed mindset with the growth mindset, emphasizing the importance of learning and adapting in the face of setbacks. He shares stories of individuals and companies that have thrived by using failure as a stepping stone towards success. From the medical field to aviation to sports, Syed presents compelling examples of how embracing failure can lead to innovation and progress. One of the key concepts in black box thinking is the Swiss cheese model illustrated through the work of psychologist James Reason. This model visualizes how mistakes are often the result of multiple small errors aligning like the holes in slices of cheese. By addressing these errors systematically, we can prevent catastrophic failures and foster a culture of continuous improvement. Throughout black box thinking, Syed offers practical strategies for individuals and organizations to embrace failure, challenge assumptions, and foster a culture of learning. By reframing our attitude towards mistakes and setbacks, we can unlock new possibilities and drive meaningful change. In black box thinking, Syed emphasizes the critical role of feedback in personal and organizational development. By being open to feedback, we can identify areas for improvement, fine-tune our strategies, and ultimately achieve better outcomes. Continuous improvement is not about avoiding mistakes but rather about learning and growing from them. Through captivating case studies and real-life examples, Syed illustrates how a growth mindset can lead to remarkable achievements. From athletes who bounce back stronger after defeats to companies that innovate through trial and error, the stories in black box thinking 
inspire us to embrace failure as a pathway to success. Building on the concept of psychological safety, Syed explores how trust and open communication are key drivers of high-performance teams. When individuals feel safe to express their ideas, challenge assumptions, and learn from failures without fear of judgment, they can collaborate more effectively and achieve greater success together. As we wrap up our exploration of black box thinking by Matthew Syed, remember that progress often stems from our willingness to confront failure, embrace learning, and adapt to new challenges. By cultivating a mindset of curiosity and resilience, we can navigate setbacks with confidence and propel ourselves towards our goals. You can find the link to acquire a copy of this incredible book in the description below. Thank you for joining us as we explored the transformative ideas in Black Box Thinking by Matthew Syed. If you're intrigued by the power of learning from failure and unlocking your full potential, be sure to check out this thought-provoking book. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you found this book summary helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more book summaries and insightful content. And share this uplifting summary with someone who may benefit from hearing them. Leave a comment down below if you've read this book or have any other recommendations for us. Stay curious, stay open to new ideas, and keep learning from your black box moments. Remember, the journey to success is paved with lessons learned along the way. Until next time, keep exploring, keep growing, and keep thriving.